Hi, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila with this week's story. It's called The Mud Flow Parted. Sounds exciting. Well, the missionaries, they were at their compound and they were looking sadly at the mountain that wasn't real far away. They were safe, but that volcano was spewing all of a sudden. There was a horrible noise and the volcano, all that fire and lava started shooting up into the air and exploding and running down the side of that mountain. Well, all the people had built their villages every so often up that mountainside, not thinking at all if that mountain would erupt again. Well, now, as the missionaries watched from the distance, there was nothing they could do to save anybody. But as they watched from the distance, the smoke spewed and that red lava was coming flying out and then down the side of the mountain it was going as fast as it could go and everything that was in its way it picked up and big boulders great big boulders and parts of those bamboo houses and even people and animals and all sorts of things were coming down the mountainside in that boiling hot lava. Oh, it was awful. The missionaries, they didn't know what to do. All they could imagine was how awful it was for those villagers and hope and pray that a lot of them had been able to get out of the way somewhere. Well, then they thought about Laihua. She was a little Chinese lady, and she lived not as high as a lot of the people on the mountain, but she lived in the village that was still on the mountain. And every so many months, like clockwork, she would come down the mountain to the missionary's compound. She was so excited to see them every time she came because they're the ones that had told her about Jesus. And every time she came, she brought a tiny little packet. It was like a little bag, probably made of skin. And in it, it had coins. They called them coppers. You know how we have pennies and they're made out of copper? Well, that was the kind of money they had. And she would bring that little bag and that was her tithe to give to God. She didn't want to keep it up on the mountain. She wanted the missionaries to have it so it could go to tell other people about Jesus. Well, like I say, she came like clockwork. So the missionaries would write on their calendar when they knew she was going to be coming. Well, they thought about her and they said, we wonder about Lai, what's happened to her? And as part of the missionary said, surely she's all right. God would protect her. Well then, weeks and weeks and weeks passed. Finally, months passed, and there was no lie, and they thought, oh, she must have been killed on the mountain. Oh. Well, then, one day, several months later, there was little lie at the mission compound gate. They couldn't believe it. They were so excited, and they they ran to her smiling and they gave her big hugs. Oh, lie, you're all right. Oh, 
We thought that the volcano had gotten you. Oh, and then Lai said, sit down. And the missionaries did. She said, I tell you my story about the volcano. And she said she had been in her village when the mountain had erupted. But most of the people that could, they ran away in their confusion and they tried to run up, run up rock, big platforms of rock, and they tried to climb trees. They tried to get on the roofs of their houses. But most of the people in Lai's village had run away. So all that was left were the ones that were too sick to go anywhere and the ones that were too crippled to climb anything. And Lai, who was so old that even with her walking stick, she wouldn't have been able to get out of the way of that fast flowing lava. And she said, I stood there watching the mountain and watching the lava coming down, but I knew I couldn't run. I haven't run in years. I couldn't climb anything. And it was like my feet were just stuck to the ground where I was. And I was so afraid. I kept thinking, I'm going to die. I don't know what to do. I can't move. And then she thought about God. And she prayed to him to please help her. Well, then rushing at her were a group of the people from her village. And they said, lie. Pray to your God for us. Pray to God to save us. Well, Lai thought she looked at those people. They had made fun of her because she believed in God. They had taunted her. They had poked at her. They had been, they had laughed that she believed in the God of heaven. And they said, you're just a stupid old woman. But Lai didn't want to remember those things then. Those people should have come to apologize to her. But Lai knew there was no time for such things. And she looked at them and she looked at the lava, that hot lava that was coming down in streams. And it was at the village up above her. And she watched that village disappear. And she thought, oh, what can I do? And those people kept saying, lie, pray for us. So she did. But then she was so terrified. She didn't want to tell them she was so terrified. She didn't want to die either. And then she remembered some of God's promises that she had read. Asking for the angels to be round about you when you're in trouble. These were promises of God that said that God would be their shield and their protector in trouble. She kept quoting those promises of God and she felt so much better. She knew her God was a big God. Her God was stronger even than a volcano or that mountain. He could help her. Then she saw that lava coming straight at them. And when it got just before lie, and that group of people that were with her, Lai turned the missionaries and she said, God split the lava right in front of us. And the lava went down the rest of the mountain, a stream here and a stream there. 
It didn't touch us. It didn't burn us. God's promises. He had kept his promises. You know, the story doesn't say whether those other people believed in God after that. I certainly hope they did. But lie had come down the mountain to tell the missionaries and the other people on her way about a God whose promises he kept, how he had split the lava as it came down to protect her and some of the other villages, just like he did for Moses when he opened the Red Sea for the Israelites. And later on, he opened the River Jordan so they could be saved through it. That's a fabulous God. And you and I can believe in that same God. A God that protects his people and keeps his promises. Thank you, boys and girls. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.